After years of customizing shells, I finally found one that might be perfect for me. Fish Shell comes with everything I wanted from Zed Shell and Bash, but without requiring the hours of plugin installations and config files. Auto suggestions built in. Syntax highlighting already there. It's so good that I've completely switched over already, except for one major problem that almost made me switch back. Let me show you why Fish might be the best shell that you've never tried and the one thing you need to watch out for. Installing it is super easy. Since I'm on Mac, I chose the Mac ports option, but it also has support for Linux, BSD, and Windows via Windows Subsystem for Linux. Launching it in my favorite terminal, Ghosty, check out our video on that and subscribe for more, we can start to go through the features that we get by default with no setup required. Firstly, when we type out our commands, it's nice to easily know you mistyped before you hit enter and see an error. That's where Fish's syntax highlighting really helps us out. For example, if I was trying to grep something, but let's say I misplace a character, you can see that the invalid command is being highlighted in red. Other highlighting features include valid paths, which are underlined. As you can see, if I type in dot slash applications, it's underlined for us, indicating it is a valid path. This all just gives you a nice heads up before you actually hit enter. But to actually stop you making errors in the first place, it also has great auto suggestions. It knows about paths, as you're currently seeing with that Chrome suggestion. It also knows about options. So if we go ahead and do dash dash here, you can see as I type, it's going to recommend me some options that I could use. But even better than this, it knows about your history as well. Now, I know you may be similar to me and you've scrolled back up through your history to rerun the same long command over and over when you probably should have put it in a script by now. This really helps out with that. For example, I was using node earlier and going to a nested folder. So if I go ahead and type in node now, you see that it actually suggests that folder that I've been using because it looked through my history and it's customized the suggestion for me. Similar to auto completions, its tab completions are great too, especially with options. So if I do dash dash here with node and then press tab, you see we get a really nice interface with a description of the options. And I can use the arrow keys to go through this and then select the one that I want. This can actually even be updated for newly installed software. All you have to do is run the fish underscore update and then underscore completions and hit enter. This is actually going to attempt to pass all of the manual pages installed on your system and create the completion files in the fish config directory for you. So Super nice if you've installed some software and you want to make sure you have the completions for it. Next up, one of my favorite features. We all know aliases for commands. You may already have a few. So we can do something like alias and then let's do LSA equals LS space dash A. Now, if I type in LSA, it's going to go ahead and run that command. But Fish actually has abbreviations and aliases. Now, abbreviations are super cool. So if I do something like this, so abbreviation dash dash add and then GCO space and then the command I want. So git checkout in this case, if I hit enter on that, now, when I type out GCO and hit space, you can see that it actually switches it out for the command. To me, this makes it easier to make small edits to the commands that I use often. And it's actually nicer for the command history too, as it displays the exact command that was run. This is especially useful if you're on a shared machine and let's say you bring in a new team member, they don't have to know what that alias did as it's gonna go ahead and switch it out for the real command. Speaking of history, Fish's interactive history is a super nice experience. If I go ahead and hit Control R here while I still have that command typed out, you can see that it's going to go ahead and auto populate the search field of the command history there. Now, if I go ahead and delete this, you can see what the history actually looks like. So we can go ahead and navigate this with the command keys. And of course, as you just saw, we can also use search as well. Super nice experience out of the box. If you're somehow embarrassed by the commands you run though, you can enable a sort of incognito mode where the commands you enter will not be saved to the history or stored to the disk. To do that, all you need to do is type in fish dash dash private or dash and then a capital P like so. And as you can see, we're going to enter into private mode where our history will not be persisted. This is actually super useful as if you're screen sharing or something like that, you don't actually have access to your previous history either. So if you've been running commands all day that maybe have a database password in, it just saves you from accidentally leaking any sense sensitive information. Once you're done with your sneaky command, all you have to do is type in exit and you can go back to your previous instance. A few more quality of life features to show before we get onto the negatives. The first one is automatic CD. Now, instead of using the change directory command, I can actually just type out the directory path itself and then hit enter and it will navigate me there as well. This all comes with directory history too. So I can use the previous directory command or the next directory command to go backwards and forwards in my directory history. And you can actually use that with the keybinds alt and then left and right on the arrow keys to go forward and backwards as well. You need to run the directory history command if you wanna see the list of the folders that you've been to. And then you can also do cdh, which is the change directory history. And that allows you to actually select which folder you want to go back to. So say I wanted to go back to the top level, that's gonna to be one. I just hit one and then enter and it takes me there. 
there. This is a super nice experience when you're working with really nested directories. Another thing I loved was the prompt. You may have seen this already when I actually went to the store directory. You can see that we're getting this nice git helper in our prompt, which you may have actually used in other shelves, but you probably installed a plugin to get that working. Fish, this comes out of the box. Same goes for error codes as well. So if I create an error, you can see it actually puts the error code in the prompt for us, which is super useful. Now this is entirely configurable and scriptable as well. So let's see how Fish handles configuration and makes that experience super nice as well. For those of us on a graphical environment, if you need to configure fish, all you need to do is run fish underscore config and hit enter. This command will actually start a web server and open up a web page where you can actually go in and change your settings. Now this has most of the settings that you'd want, like the theme, as you can see here, or we can change the prompt, which I just mentioned, as you can see here, it actually has a few that you could use already, or you can completely script this too. Then it shows you the function definitions, variables, history, and also your key bindings as well. It's a super cool way of handling configuration that I hadn't actually seen before in a shell. So that's my favorite quality of life features, but trust me, there is loads more. I'll leave a link to that documentation down below. But before we look at the negatives, let's quickly talk about the fish scripting language. And that's because it's related to the negative. On the left here, I have a fish script and on the right, a bash script. They should pretty much do the exact same thing. Now, pretty much all of the basics are the same, as you saw with functions like list, change directory, move, copy, all of them. But when it gets to the actual scripting, there are a few differences, and that's because fish aims at having an easier syntax. Now, one thing I do want to point out before all of this is nothing is stopping you from continuing to use this bash syntax. You just have to make sure that you have the shebang at the top to tell it which environment it should be running in. So what are the differences then? Well, one of the key differences you can see already is in how you set variables. In bash, you may be used to doing it with just the variable name and then equals and the value. You can't do that in fish. In fish, you have to do set, then the variable name and the value, but you can see you can actually use them and echo them in the exact same way. Now, another difference is in the way that we do for loops. So you can see in both of these, we have for file in and then asterisk.txt, but then in bash, you have to make sure you put this do here, and that's actually tripped up a few people. And in bash, you write done, whereas in fish, you have end. There's a subtle difference in how it's handling this dollar sign and then file as well. You see, if we actually go ahead and run both of these scripts, so if I run the fish demo, I don't get any errors. And if I run ls, so list, you can see I don't have those text files anymore as it successfully deleted them. If I go ahead and try this in bash though, you can see that we actually get an error because there's a space in the file name and that's not being correctly handled by this dollar sign file. To fix this in bash, you'd actually have to wrap that in quotations to ensure that it doesn't have an issue with the space. So it's nice to see that fish is helping us out with that. In my opinion, another awesome win for the fish syntax is the string command. As you can see here, it's super easy to work with strings. If we wanna go ahead and replace world with fish, we can just say string replace world with fish like so. Whereas if you're doing something like that in bash, you have to use the sed command. And when you're doing something quite complex, this can get a little bit more confusing. The string command is super powerful. Highly recommend you check it out. There's a few more subtle differences like that, and I'll show you where to find them in a bit. But one thing I do want to point out is the awesome fish indent command. So let's exit out of this file. And then if we go ahead and run the command fish underscore indent, and then the script that we're trying to format, we can just hit enter on that, and it will try and sort out the formatting for us. As I said, just super nice to have out of the box. Overall, I think you have to try the syntax to love it, and I think it's going to be a divisive one. Me personally, I stick to just writing in bash with the shebang, as I like being able to work across teams and servers without requiring fish for all of them, since it's not a default. So as I said, I was showing you the fish syntax so that I could talk about what I think is going to be the biggest negative for most people. You can find that on this fish for bash users page. As you can see, it says fish is intentionally not POSIX compatible. And as such, some of the things you are used to work differently. Now, POSIX is the family of standards to clarify and make uniform the application programming interfaces and things such as command line shell utilities for unix -y operating systems. But why does that impact you? Well, as we saw earlier, the way that we set variables, the syntax is a little different. The string manipulation also behaves a little bit differently. And as you can see, it outlines all of the key differences here as well. So that may be a deal breaker for some of you. The reason it wasn't for me is because I can continue to use bash scripts just by making sure that I have the shebang in all of them. There you go. Let me know in the comments if you would consider fish. Have you already used it? Or do you have an even cooler alternative that I should check out? While you're down there, subscribe, and as always, see you in the next one.